Happy Tuesday. It's another day off for the Pittsburgh Penguins, but of course they were back at practice today and they had some new line combinations, especially um, for the defensive pairings. We're going to get to that and I'll give my thoughts on some of those as we head down the stretch here. Five games left in the regular season. Also going to maybe take a little look at the standings, see what's going on, and of course get into uh, my opinion, um, ranking the playoff opponents by who I would rather face um, number one at the top, and then the third one is obviously the least amount for who I want to face. That's all coming up for today's episode of the Locked on Penguins podcast. Your Locked on Penguins, your daily podcast on the Pittsburgh Penguins, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Locked On Penguins podcast. I am your host, Hunter Hodes. Remember to follow me on Twitter at Hunter Hodes. Follow the show's Twitter at LO. Article Penguins. And of course, thank you all so much for making this your first listen of the day. So it's definitely still a little weird. You know, usually by now the Penguins have been play, have played at least another game. But, you know, this five-day break um, definitely tests, you know, I think everyone. But I think it's, it's good that the team um, still has a few days off. Um, you know, I, I, I always come here. Prepared with content for you all. I'm not going to come out here and say I have nothing to talk about. Yeah, it's just, you know, the season is still going. Um, even during the offseason, I'm not going to say that. I always will have content prepared for people. Um, that said, so let's get into some of the, the, the practice updates that we saw <clears throat> uh, today for the Penguins, that is. So they had about a 55-minute session, um, so basically close to an hour um, and they had a fully healthy forward lineup, which is nice. Um, obviously, Evgeny Malkin, um, he is suspended for one more game on Thursday against Boston. He will be able to play the final four games once that suspension is lifted. Um, so top 12 forwards, it looks like right now, Gensel, and Crosby, and Raquel. I am very glad that Mike Sullivan is continuing to use that line. I think that's probably going to be the top line heading into the playoffs, rightfully so. Um, Raquel has been just awesome. Ever since he was elevated up to, you know, especially when Brian Rust um, was out sick, excuse me, you know, Raquel, just, you know, their underlying numbers did not miss a beat. You know, he's had uh, plenty of glorious chances that either he set up or that he has scored. Um, he just seems such like a natural fit for Sidney Crosby's line. And then obviously we all know the chemistry that Jake and Sid have together. So uh, I'm glad that Mike is continuing to have that first line together. Zilker, Malk, and Russ, it looks like that is going to be the second line when the playoffs roll around. I have no problem with that as well. You know, those top two lines, um, that those could be a first line. Those could be first lines on honestly any team, uh, to be honest with you. You know, Brian Rust, um, he can play with either Sid or Gino. I think Rust, I mean, I think Malkin probably needs Rust more than Sid does, you know, just because, you know, he's a pure finisher for that line. But, you know, he's also a good playmaker that can get Malkin the puck when he wants it. And, you know, when Evgeny Malkin is humming um, with the puck, you know, there's very few players in this league that can stop him. So I'm glad that Mike, that Mike, excuse me, is, you know, continuing to have Brian on that line. And then Jason Zucker is always such a natural fit for Gino's line, a very good four checker, decent defensively, can uh, has a nice finishing touch when it's on. Playing making ability is also good too. So I really like those top two lines. Bottom six, Danton Heinen with Jeff Carter and Kasperi Kavanen. I think that's a fine third line. Heinen has 17 goals. You have that in the third line role. That's very good. Jeff Carter is close to 20 goals, even though he hasn't been, you know, that good recently. Kasperi Kapanen, you know, he's been a better, I guess, as of late. Still not good enough um, to where he was last year, but, you know, they're not going to put him um, in the top six. All right, that's just that, that's not happening here. So um, that's fine with me. But the fourth line, it looks like when the <clears throat> playoffs roll around, so they're expected to start now in two weeks, Brian Boyle, at least how it reads to me, is going to be the odd man out. Mike DeFabo had the lines this morning. Rodriguez on the left wing on the fourth line. Teddy Bluger centering it. Brock McGinn on the right wing with Brian Boyle also rotating in. So like I said, that reads like to me that I think Boyle is going to be the 13th forward. I, I, I understand the cries for people that want him in the lineup. He's been a hell of a story. He has double-digit goals. He has out – I think he has exceeded – basically all of our expectations this year. And, you know, that's great. You know, I mean, I didn't think he was really going to do anything. 
he made me look to be a complete dumbass. <laughs> you know, and I'm totally fine when admitting I am wrong. I have no problem in doing it. You know, I, I, I don't like parts of the media that, you know, they'll try to move the goalposts and change their stance and all that. No, I mean, I, I, I have the take. Um, I thought it was going to be true and ended up not being true. I looked like an idiot. So, um, but, you know, McGinn has looked pretty good since coming back from the injury. You know, he had that goal against the Islanders. I, I know it was an empty netter, but, you know, he he looked good, really good on the, on the um, penalty kill, excuse me, um, was getting some chances as well. These last couple of games, um, his underlying numbers have been much better compared to where he was um, before he had that hand slash wrist injury. He deserves um, to stay in the lineup, I'm going to shut down my Mac because I have the Discord notification um, coming up. I apologize um, about that. But, um, yeah, I, I don't think Brock should be taken out of the lineup. You know, I, I know Mike Sullivan really likes his penalty killing ability. Again, you know, he's been decent production-wise. And, you know, again, his underlying have been pretty good um, since he came back. Now, other players on that fourth line. Um, Evan Rodriguez, for as much as he's been dumped on, um, by fans, you know, recently just because his production has not been there. He's also close to 20 goals. But Mike Sullivan is not going to take that player out of the lineup, especially one that, you know, he can definitely heat up if he wants to in the playoffs. Who knows? Maybe he could have another heater that he had earlier in the season. Is it likely? Probably not. But did anyone expect him to be that good early on in the season? No. I, I, I especially didn't. No one in the Penguins media did. I, I don't think any of the fans did either. So, you know, I don't think he's going to be taking him out of the lineup. And, you know, as for, you know, a series against any of the three playoff teams, which I'm going to get to in my next segment, you know, Rangers, Carolina, and Florida, because it's probably going to be one of those three teams that the Penguins open up against on the road. I, I don't think Boyle is a good fit um, in those years, especially a team like the Panthers who can roll four lines against you defensively. They're very deep. I know Bobrovsky's not that good, but, you know, you need all the scores that you can get um, in the lineup and who are also quick. I just – I think Boyle's foot speed would be very much exposed against the Panthers and even more so against Carolina. You know, Carolina has given the Penguins a lot of fits this season. I think of all the teams that Pittsburgh has played this year, they're probably one of three that's basically outplayed them almost every time. And again, I'm going to get more deeper into this coming up in my next segment. But, uh, and, you know, with Carolina as well, you know, they can also run four lines at you defensively. They're very sharp. I know Frederick Anderson may not be ready for the playoffs. If he is, you know, that's even more of a difference maker. Um, I just think, you know, his lack of foot speed will also be exposed against a Rod Brindamore uh, squad that is also built on speed and skill. Maybe they can get away with it a bit against the Rangers. But even then, with how, you know, uh, with how much a safe game that the Rangers play, um, I just, I think it would be a bad idea to have Boyle on the ice most of that series. Now, can adjustments be made during a playoff series? Absolutely. You see coaches do it all the time. One guy comes in, one guy comes out. Heck, sometimes it's two or three guys come in, two or three guys come out. Some guys move up and down the lineup, change the lines, all that. So, you know, do I expect Brian Boyle to be a healthy scratch for all seven of those games, for all seven potential possible games against whoever they play? Probably not. I think he will draw in at some point, but I think, you know, for game one, game two, um, Boyle can and should be the odd man out. And it looks like that's going to be the case based off the practice lines today. Um, defensively, Brian Dumoulin is back with Chris Letang. And I understand that's going to make some people upset. But the fact of the matter is the Brian Dumoulin-John Marino pairing was dog water, as the kids like to say. Um, of the eight defensive pairings for the Pittsburgh Penguins that have played over 100 plus minutes at 5v5 this year, they are the only pairing that ranked below 50% in shot attempts for so Corsi, scoring chances in high danger. It was an absolutely brutal pairing. Mike Sullivan had seen enough. John Marino's offensive game was not coming out at all while he was paired with Dumoulin, and he decided to make a change. And, you know, I'm fine with it. Um, in a perfect world, you want Brian Dumoulin to probably be a healthy scratch um, for at least a couple of these games because, honestly, they don't mean much because they're already in the playoffs. You know, you're, you're going to have to play who, who whatever good team, you, whatever team the Penguins face is going to be really freaking good. So at the end of the day, these games really don't mean so, so much. But again, you know, they're not just going to openly tank them for the sake of taking them. So I understand why Brian Dumoulin is going to get some reps in to see if he can, you know, change this around going into the playoffs. But still, I think in a perfect world, you would like to see him bench for a game or two just to see, you know, if, if that's what he needs to really 
get his mojo back. But, you know, Brian Jimlin usually does his best work with Chris Letang. I'm not surprised that Mike put him back with him. And then Matheson was with Ruedel. Again, I'm fine with that. They've used Matheson and Marino at times. They use Matheson with Letang at times, which has been a pretty decent pairing. The underlying numbers have been very strong. But, you know, Mike is just, you know, he's trying to tinker with the lineup. This, this is the time to do it with five games left in the regular season before the games really start to matter. Pedersen was with Marino. And Nathan Boyo was with Mark Freeman. This was his first uh, practice with the Penguins were a uh, no contact sweater. He's again, he's probably not going to get in the lineup once the playoffs um, are here. But so, so uh, sorry about that. I thought my dog, my puppy over here was uh, getting up. So apologize about that. So those are the practice lines today. Again, 55 minute session. This is, that's what the five V five looked like. And, you know, again, I'm fine with basically all of them forward forward wise. This team is still really deep. They can go up against basically any team in the league, with that kind of four depth, just look at the production that they've gotten from most of those guys. Almost all those players have double digit goals this year. So, <laughs> I mean, that's obviously very good defensively. I still think they're mainly fine. I know some people are down on them, but you know, when they all are on their game, um, it's a pretty good, you know, it's a pretty good defensive unit. So uh, I'll be curious to see if that can be the case uh, come playoff time. I'm fine with Doom going back on Latang's pairing again. I still would like to see him scratch at some point, but you know, that's just, I think, whatever um, at this point. Coming up in the next segment, I'm going to go into the three very likely playoff matchups for the Penguins. You all have a 33% chance of being right and give my pros and cons for the Penguins, you know, playing them versus not playing them. But before we get to that, betonline.net is your number one source for all of your betting stats and sports info. You can find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's basketball playoffs and the start of the Major League Baseball season. BetOnline is your continued source for all of your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. You can head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. That is BetOnline, where the game starts. Now, as promised, here are some selections from a Mattress Factory Museum, Twitter prompts, and an official response from the museum. When prompted, art is a sport, at yes, that M. Gibson on Twitter replied, at a minimum, a lot of art gets physically demanding. So Mattress Factory checked in with some installers at the museum, and they spend hours in some of the weirdest positions juggling heavy power tools and hardware. They're basically acrobatic contractors. Yes, it sounds exhausting, but I don't think that's going to convince everyone that art is a sport. So... All of this comes from Mattress Factory, Pittsburgh's premier site-specific contemporary arts installations museum. That's just a fancy way of actually saying actually immersive art. You can visit mattress.org slash gopens to get a free one-year membership to Mattress Factory when you buy tickets for the Penguins Bruins game coming up on April 21st. So it's just a couple days away at this point. So again, mattress.org slash gopens to get a free one-year membership to Mattress Factory when you buy tickets for the Penguins Bruins game on April 21st. All right, I'm back here on this episode of the Locked on Penguins podcast. I am your host, Hunter Hodes. Remember to follow me on Twitter, Hunter Hodes. Follow this show's Twitter at L underscore Penguins. So let's get into this topic that I have prepared. So, you know, it's going to be the New York Rangers, the Carolina Hurricanes, or the Florida Panthers at this point. You know, the Penguins, they're either going to be in that 2-3 spot or they're going to probably be in that second wild card spot. You know, the, the Bruins, they won – tonight in overtime there are now two points up and they have a game in hand I'm on the penguins so uh pittsburgh's gonna have to win that game on thursday um the bruins will again the bruins will then have a game in hand on them and the standings will be tied if pittsburgh does win that in regulation so even if pittsburgh again they, they do get the first wild card spot that's going to be against the metro team so um again they're, they're either going to get one of the two metro teams carolina or new york or they're going to get the winner of the atlantic in the second wild card spot and play the Florida panthers so um, I've given this a lot of thought. I still think the Rangers are probably their best matchup. It sounds weird because they lost three out of four, but you know, the Rangers don't score a lot, but it's, it, it's hard to, to say it. It's just because all these matchups are going to be so tough. I mean, you're, you're talking about millimeters at this point for me, liking one over another, um, but the Penguins, you know, I think when they have their forward lineup healthy, they're deeper than them defensively. I think they have a better six man unit than the Rangers. Goaltending is the only place where I would truly give New York the edge. When talking about special teams units, I would get, take the Rangers power play right now or the Penguins power play penalty kill. I would probably take the Penguins penalty kill. Um, but 
I still think if the Penguins, you know, they forecheck hard, they cut down on some of the errors defensively, they get pretty good goaltending. If Tristan Jari is able to come back, I still think the Penguins can beat the Rangers in a seven game series. You know, everyone was picking the Penguins last year against the Islanders. They went six and two against them in the regular season. Oh, yeah, the Islanders got no shot, terrible matchup. Islanders beat them in six games. The playoffs are a whole different ball game. Everyone goes down to a goose egg. It is 0-0. You throw out the regular season. No one cares about how you played against a team during those 82 games. Case in point, I'll give you an example. In 2013, the Penguins steamrolled those first two teams, the Islanders and the Ottawa Senators. They meet the Boston Bruins, who they went 3-0 against. In the regular season, everyone's picking the Penguins to go to the final. They're finally going to play the Blackhawks, have the Stanley Cup final for the ages, Kane and Taves versus Sid and Gino, all this stuff, right? Boston goes out there and sweeps them. Sweeps them. Again, I don't think a sweep would happen if these two teams were playing in the playoffs. I'm just making the point that the regular season goes out the window when a team plays another team in the playoffs. It has no bearing on how that series is going to go unless it's just a total, you know, like you saw last year when Colorado played basically St. Louis. I mean, that was just a joke just because Colorado was worlds better than them. But, you know, it would be very tight checking. The Rangers play a very defensive style of hockey. Um, you know, they forecheck really well too. Panarin's been incredible. Zabinajad, Chris Kreider's at 50 goals somehow. Adam Fox is great. I know Igor Shosturkin had that little mouth thing towards Mark Friedman. That I'm sure will be hanging on the Penguins' wall every time they go out for practice and for games. But... I still think that's probably the best matchup for the Penguins, even though they'll have to face the best goaltender in the world right now in the first round. I just, you know, the Penguins have played Carolina worse than the other three teams. And that they would be um my third that they would be actually number three. I would have the Panthers at number two. And I'm, I guess I'll get into that right now for as much as the Panthers scare me. And trust me, they do. You know, their forwards can also match up against any team in the league. They're probably going to get Aaron Ekblad back. They're ridiculously talented. Sergey Bobrovsky has been really bad for these last couple of months. His save percentage is definitely cratered. He's never been a good playoff goaltender on a save percentage. I think in the playoffs is right around 896, 897. He's played really bad against the Penguins. I would give the Penguins the edge there. Um, if the Penguins can get into his head a little bit, that would be a little bit interesting, but I still think it's a tough matchup anyway. You slice it just because I would be afraid for my life the, the, for the Panthers coming down the rush almost every time. I think Pittsburgh played Florida really well in the regular season. They took three out of six points. They probably should have taken five out of six. Um, in the game that they lost down in some ways, they had a 4-2 lead with less than 10 minutes left. Florida comes back to tie it, and then they win it in overtime. Um, you know, the other one, the Penguins, um, I think won in the extra session and then the other, uh, the other one in Pittsburgh, uh, Florida won by a goal. And that was a very close game. I thought the Penguins were outplaying them for most of that game. Um, you know, I, I think that will be a closer series than some people. I think it would. Um, that's for sure. Um, at least, at least in my opinion. Um, but there's still a team I, I wouldn't want to face. I don't want the Penguins to play any three of these teams. It, it really is just pick your poison. Carolina, they have outskated the Penguins all year long. They carry the play against them all year long. I think they're probably one of the teams that's deeper than the Penguins. Defensively, they're a bit better. They have the edge in goaltending in Frederick Anderson if he's healthy. Um, I just do not like that matchup at all. I've seen this take on Penguins Twitter and some other places that they want to play Carolina. They haven't been that good lately and all that. I do not want any part of playing Carolina. I think it would be a great series. I think it would go six to seven games. I just don't think the Penguins would win that series. I'll, I'll put that out here right now. I would love to be wrong. Obviously, I would celebrate being wrong, to be honest with you. But um, just with how good Carolina has been this year and you know, with how great their forwards are and and all that, their special teams too. Rod Brindamore is an excellent coach. Um that's just the team I want the least. So it's definitely the it's the Rangers at the top by a, a very slim margin, just because I think the Penguins can outskate them, that they've outplayed them in a couple of the games this year, even if they didn't get the result at times. Um, especially in the second one that was in Pittsburgh, the Penguins lost that game three to two. I thought that was a 50-50 game that could have gone either way. The Penguins definitely outplayed them in spurts. The Rangers did the same. It, the Penguins just didn't get the result. So this easily could have been a 50-50 split this year you know that's what a lot of these series is they're, they're, that's what they're going to be they're coin flips you know the east is a gauntlet um i don't think anyone we would be surprised um if 
any team who plays a team in the first round in the East wins. Um, other than I think I would be, I guess, a little surprised if the Penguins beat the Hurricanes. I wouldn't be too surprised if they beat the Panthers, just because you know that 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 team just seems like it's primed for an upset. I don't know if they can continue this ridiculous pace that they're on. They, they play like the 2016 Penguins, but they have horrible goaltending. The Rangers, you know, they don't have a lot of playoff experience, though. I kind of think you know, in, in a way, that's a little overrated. Um, but I still think the Penguins are deeper than them. Um, but you know, that series would also be a coin flip. Would anyone be surprised if either the Penguins or Rangers win that series? No, I don't think so um, at all. So again, I would have Rangers at number one, the Panthers at number two, and Carolina Hurricanes at number three. Um, there are no other teams right now that the Penguins can really face um, in the first round. So you have a 33.3% chance of being right at the end of the day. So we'll see. The season ends right now. In about a week and a half, Penguins have five games left in that time. Um, so we will see very soon um, who that will be. So, so a little more to get to for um, this episode of Locked on Penguins podcast, if I can find this here. But before we get to our last segment, you can save time and money when using Rock Auto. Why should you choose to spend 30%, 50%, or even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or car dealership? Rock Auto is a family business of so do-yourselfers for over 20 years. The prices are laid below for every customer. They have everything you can need from brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, and even new carpet. Now, you can go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car truck. And you can write Locked On in their How'd You Hear About Us box so they know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliable low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. That is rockauto.com. All right, we're back here on this episode of the Locked On Penguins podcast. I am your host, Hunter Hodes. Remember to follow me on Twitter at Hunter Hodes. Follow the show's Twitter at LO underscore Penguins. So one thing that has been in- intriguing me lately is that Sidney Crosby has probably not been getting as much heart trophy love as he deserves. Um, he's hit the, hit the point pace that he's on right now. Um, no, if, if this were an 82 game season and he had been playing, well, if he had been, if he hadn't missed a good chunk of time, uh, to start the season, he would be on an 82 uh, on a one, a 100 plus point pace. That is how good he has been this year. 80 points in 64 freaking games. Um, he, he would be well over 100 right now. Um, if he had played in the 13 games that he missed. I mean, I, I think that's just how I see it <clears throat> um, at this point. And the fact that he is on a 100-plus point pace, and even though he's not going to hit 100 points a season, just goes to show how good he is. And, you know, he's doing this at both ends of the rink. His defensive metrics have been pretty good this year. Goal scoring-wise, he's almost at 30 goals. His playmaking ability is still second to none. Um, he would be on my heart trophy ballot if I had a vote. I would probably have him um, – Top four, top five. I would probably still give the award to Matthews. Leon Dreisaitl is right there. I think Ovechkin's had a hell of a year. Igor Shosturkin, Johnny Goudreau, obviously. Uh, Jonathan Huberdeau. Um, this is probably one of the hardest Hart Trophy ballots that you know PHWA could ever have. But you know, if I had a vote, and I know I do the obviously I do a podcast on Penguins, I would have seen in my top five. Again, I probably would not have him as a finalist, um, but I, I would have him certainly in the discussion. To be a finalist, he this is one of the best seasons I think I've ever watched from Sidney Crosby, and the fact that he is doing this in his mid thirties, um, it's it's insane. You know, we are so blessed to watch this guy do what he does on a nightly basis. Everyone is going to miss him when he has gone. That you know, he's already over fourteen hundred points if he hadn't missed all that time with the concussions. He'd be knocking on the door with over sixteen hundred points right now, probably closing in on seventeen hundred. He'd probably be very close to breaking Mario Lemieux. All-time Penguins record when he had, um, I believe it's 1,723 off the top of my head. So just ridiculous stuff from Sid. Um, I, I can't say enough, to be honest with you. you know. And um, in other news, you know, you check the standings. It's, it's getting close, guys. Um, I'll say that, Yins. You know, the Capitals are one point behind the Penguins. They also have a game in hand. Uh, they win tomorrow in Vegas. They're a point up. With five, both teams have five games left. Lucky for the Penguins, the schedule favors them down the stretch. Um, three of, uh, what's going to say? Um, three of their final five games are against non-playoff teams, including two this weekend against the Philadelphia Flyers and the Detroit Red Wings. Those have to be wins, um, even with the goaltending situation. You you can't lose to those two teams. Um, they're basically just waiting for the season to be over at this point. Dylan Larkin is out for the Red Wings. The Flyers are 
um, figuratively and literally tanking. They've lost over 50 games this year. You cannot lose that game. I don't care if it's in Philadelphia. The Blue Jackets are the final game of the regular season. They're not that good either. Edmonton, even though they're going to be a playoff team, that, sh- that can potentially be a win at PPG. And then this Boston game, I think, is winnable too. All five of these games for the Penguins are very winnable down the stretch. So if they are able to take care of business here and somehow go 10 for 10 or even go 9 out of 10, that should be enough for them to clinch a top three spot in the Metro. But Penguins better be careful here. Um, they had an eight or a nine point lead just about a week and a half ago in the Capitals. That has now evaporated. It is now a one point lead for third. Um, and there is a very real chance that the Penguins will open up the playoffs down in the sunrise playing the Florida Panthers. So you know, it's going to be an exciting finish to see who is going to play who here um, with the team. Now, if the Penguins are able to beat the Bruins on Thursday, there's a potential that they could get the first wild card spot. I know the Bruins will have uh, still a game in hand on the Penguins, but I'll have to see what their schedule is here um, down the stretch. So um, the Penguins can finish in you know one of three spots at this point. They can get third, they can get the first wild card spot, or they can get the second wild card spot. All remains to be seen. So that'll do it for this episode of the Locked On Penguins podcast. Thank you all so much for listening to this episode. I have another episode coming for you all on Wednesday. We're going to preview that game on Thursday against the Boston Bruins and touch on a couple of other topics that I have planned. And then Thursday, going to do a full game recap for that uh, game against Boston. And then Friday, we're going to preview the weekend ahead for the Penguins. So again, thank you all so much for listening to this episode. I will talk to you all on Wednesday.